interesting that I don't have a cap.
Whoa, my shit's broken and not showing the right pictures anymore. But the audio works. Okay, good to know the audio works well. We got problems. We got problems, man. We got problems with no video. Maybe it is just a loose cable. Slowly, I will told you, loose cable. All right, let's try that from the top. I'm going to wait for Rick to try from the top. You mean like clicking intro again and then doing it again? <clears throat> Voila, we're full screen. Cool. We're full screen. Why does it say no card and camera? I don't know. Well, there's that. Oh, I think I'm on the wrong mode. Oh, my God. Let's try it again. Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> Voila. Back in black. I didn't even post about it. But <laughs> And we're live for the first time on the DJ Life podcast. Wow. Totally didn't have to do like seven takes right there. Because um, uh, I had all the podcast gear at the warehouse last time. <laughs> so what happens. So all the settings are completely off. But anyways, welcome back, everybody. Eric, welcome how you doing? Back. I'm good. I just sold my car. Eric sold his Tesla, guys. He's yep. finally getting a gas-guzzling car again. Yep. I sold my Tesla so I can buy a Tesla. <laughs> Um, I thought you're buying that Lambo this time. No, no, no. Once, once maybe this house gets settled. Oh, at Domino's we got oh yeah, we uh, got advertisements now. So what's new? What's new? Oh, I did actually post a thing on Facebook the other day that was fucking awesome. I'll pull it up. Okay, I was about to say we 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 took two weeks off this time. We didn't take one week. We we had another week without telling anybody. All right. If we um, if we run stagnant, we're cutting it short. Fuck y'all. It's fine though. Um, but we're going to see what's up. Uh, so the other day I posted, okay, I Let's didn't, hear this. I didn't quite expect it to pop off as much as it did, but I, I thought it was going to strike some nerves and, uh, Paul local Paul DJ oh, yeah, is yeah. the reason. Oh, he's the reason for the post. It, okay. Yes, that's cool. where this came from. Anyways, I love Paul. He's so cool. Yeah. DJs y'all need to stop telling couples they're receiving a coordinator. You, the DJ, what a joke. If you say that, you are a joke. The comments are insane. First, people are butting in with calling themselves out that they're doing it. And you can see every single person that is like trying to argue how you can say, you should say that kind of thing. And then, you know, the other 80% are just like, yeah, that's fucking crazy. You know, and like people are trying to justify it, which is so. You need to talk to your mic, buddy. Oh. But people are trying to justify it, and it's fucking bullshit to say, because the argument, someone posted the definition of coordination, right? I realize we're organizing some shit. Okay, duh. We're we're organizing some stuff. However, oh, I just looked at the chat. Uh, yeah, it's right there, too. But you could say that about any vendor. You know, the caterers can, are coordinators all of a sudden. The videographer is a coordinator. And the, it, okay. Where you know, it every end? vendor has a timeline. Exactly. Everyone, Everyone makes, their own, makes timeline. their own time. That's not coordination, though. You are not a wedding coordinator. And that that's the confusing detail. If, if someone were to say, like, oh, we run the events that we deal with. That's, that's not different. that's not calling yourself a wedding coordinator. You're being specific and you're not lying. If you say they're receiving coordination though and just leave it at that, that is confusing mm -hmm. and you are a fucking liar. Yeah, that you're is, not showing up. It's at... nothing short of you are a liar. 
you're not showing up at nine o'clock in the morning and making sure the hair and makeup people are there. Yeah, you're not checking on their fucking food and stuff. And uh, as a DJ, you actually probably are checking if the food is ready so that you but can you, tell you, people to go get it. You're not checking to make sure they're there yet. Right, but it's not like your problem if it's not there yet, you know? And that's what a wedding coordinator does. And there are some people on this status that even after I said some shit like that or who, because plenty of people are on that oh side. Oh my God. I They're like arguing for it, you know? And it's like revolution mill. Uh, probably. I bet he's getting a, uh, cause so, cause they are one of the ones that requires a coordinator. And what, what do you think the odds are that he's selling to the client, to the couple that he covers the coordinator classification so that they don't I, need a coordinator. I feel like, he, like if he did that, the venue would very quickly be like, that's nope. not what the fuck we're talking about and wouldn't be cool with it. I did it at revolution mill. Did what? Back when we first started, we, pit- oh, we, 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 we pitched, we pitched the coordinator at first back uh-huh. then, but that was before. So that was, that was just based on experience coming from Ohio, uh-huh. like rural Ohio coordinators did not exist. Uh-huh. Well, the, you, the tier that we DJ in a coordinator is not a guarantee of a wedding. Like there's, it's not necessarily it, it, going to be there. correct. And it, it I'm just saying, like, from when where I started as a DJ, the company I used to work for, we dealt with a coordinator maybe once a year, if that, for, like, one event. So I started to use that as a differentiation sales factor. Like, yeah, we'll help you develop the timeline. We'll help line people up. And, you know, what, we're, what you were just talking about, actually clarifying what we're doing versus just saying coordination. Mm-hmm. Um but like that's what I came down here, and we've just we got rid of that like after year one. Once I realized there was actually really good coordinators down here that made our lives easy, mm-hmm. just said fuck that. Right. Yeah, moved I mean, on. That's another but, thing. But uh, revolution coordinators Mill. are probably going to hate you if they hear you doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like I hate people that sell up lights because I want to sell fucking up lights. <laughs> you know, like duh. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't like venues that include DJ with the service. They force you to buy their DJ. I don't like that venue because, duh, you know. You know, uh, so this is, so we just did a wedding with you recently where they booked us for the uplighting, even though we could have done the DJing too. We just literally had another one today at Legacy that um, they said, yeah, we went ahead and booked another DJ, but we want to use you for the lighting. And it's like, they're trying to hack the cheap, they're trying to cheap out and, and on the DJ end by not booking us to do the DJ, but then turn around and pay us probably the same, if not more to do the lighting, the, you know, it's which funny. makes no fucking sense. The gig he's talking about, they literally hired us to DJ and then they hired Rick to do the up lights. I was at the gig and I like walked in the back and I saw Marcellus and I was like, wait, so confused. I literally, yeah. I thought in, in a, for a brief moment before I had talked to him, I was like, Oh, Marcellus. He's here, here to, to save DJ. it. Yeah, yeah. I for I was like, oh, you know, Lindsay called Rick. I don't. I have. No, yeah, yeah, I have no yeah. Idea. You thought someone was like right, and I was so fucking confused. But the night before, I they hired us to do tube lights, and there was some a, a DJ. He actually listens to our podcast. Um, fuck, I can't remember his name. Uh, I can't remember what no, Tyler. No, um, oh. David. Claude Filter, that was okay. his name. Uh, anyways, and I know him uh, mm-hmm. you know, vaguely, but I, I acquaintance-wise. But they hired him to DJ and us to do the lighting, and he didn't have a clue. It was I was awkward to, for me to walk up it's, and be like, "Hey, I see you got lights, but like here's some more." Hmm. He didn't have anything like the tubes, but yeah, still. yeah. It's uh, it, but but it blows my mind because like I don't know your your contract was what probably sixteen hundred dollars to do that wedding, something like that. Yeah. They spent fourteen hundred dollars on us to come do uplighting. That's crazy. We around the room. If if they would have pushed us, we would have. Well, first, our uplighting is not like yours, as you know. Yeah. But they don't know that. They don't know that. But th- that's the thing, though. You know, it, it could have been cheap, and but she the the client basically wanted it to bounce to the music, so we put on there the tech hours and the additional fees for someone to come and run the lighting I mean, for the whole event. The motherfucker was there, yeah. So that's what, when he told me that, I was like, damn it, I got a fucking DJ on the way. I want a DJ now. <laughs> I was like, this would be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now that you got like cool lighting and everything. Well, it's just now that Marcellus is like hanging. Well, you know, you had a photo booth there too, so your bill was probably a little bit higher, but oh, still. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, but that's all sip. I don't care. But still, it's just mind-boggling that we're getting into these situations where like there people are trying to cheap out and not hire us for the DJ because our DJ fee starts at like two grand now. 
and they're just booking the lighting. Yeah. Hey, what? I mean, and obviously money, I guess. But I mean, Marcellus man. wasn't really mad. To, he was more bored doing it, but he literally made the same amount if he would have DJed it. Right. To just come there and run up lighting, right. which is just so funny to me. Yeah, he was showing me DMX stuff that I obviously don't have a clue about. Um, Near do I. I'm right there with you. Yeah, I just, I, I need to learn. I told him I got to sit down with him and have him show me. I only need, like, I want to buy one of those controllers so I can, like, easily change the tubes. That's all I would care to do, you know, and beyond that, I just, that's it. Uh, so I'll probably end up taking some DMX lessons soon from Marcellus. Um, what but, do you want to change on the tubes? Cause you can literally from the remote do solid color, then go sound. So I, it'll go to sound, but it's like too plain and it's on a cool setting right now. I could literally leave them set to what they are forever and mm-hmm. I would never want it. Different. You know, there's multiple sound modes, right? There's like four different ones. There's like four different ones, but there's, I've, if I set it to auto, which isn't to the music, mm-hmm. but it does such more stuff, you know, it'll do strobe and then it like changes to some, there's a sound mode that does that. Does it? It's like sound mode four or something. Or maybe it was like one or something. Because one just does like the music kind of bars. And then one comes down. And then there's one that just does like full color. And then there's one that does all sorts of different complex things. Yeah. I need to just, I don't know. and I mean, it wouldn't hurt anyways because we use up lights. Because before Marcellus got around the DMX and because it took him fucking forever to do it. Uh um, That's what we used for the first like five or six events. We just ran it on that sound mode four. That's what we're doing currently. And then you can, uh, the, the more complicated one. And then you can also set it so that when you hit strobe, it just, it just does white strobe. Uh-huh. So that and then you can flip it back and then you can flip it back to sound. So you click sound. You just, just need a little learn. crash code. on. on. Yeah. I just got to learn. I mean, it wouldn't hurt for me to kind of learn about some DMXing anyways. Oh, we're missing out on Don's, uh, networking dinner tonight. Oh, is that? Yeah, I, I just got a notification. Triad Bridal I, dinner. I meant to sign up for all those because I do want to go. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do the shows, but I do want to go to the dinners. Um, I like Don ish. I like Don ish. You know, I like Don ish. I, I like Don when he's not trying to be a salesman to me. If he's just being himself, Don is. Cool. Yeah, genuine Don is. He's where cool he acts dude. like he hears about everything you do. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he's always very happy to talk to me. I like that. You know. Yeah. But um. But there's all the, the the problem for me is whenever you talk to him, he's always got something he wants. Oh, that's what I don't like. And I know it. I'm just waiting for it. Anytime. Oh, Eric, can you, you ever give me called a call? him out of the blue though? No. Oh, so I've called him for like details on the show. But if you call him out of the blue, he's such a different person. He's yeah. like so thrown off and like yeah, and like uh, and like he's like constantly he, trying to get out have, of the situation. He's trying to like get out of the he call. Didn't have time to calculate his words <laughs> yeah. prior to it. I could see that he's stuttering over his words, and then he's like. And then he tries to throw in some big words on top of that. You know, it was constant like, he, so let's re- realize what the possible situation yeah. potential is yeah. out of this. He, he always, <laughs> it's like, so fun. like you said, he's super calculated. And, and let's say he's calling me and he, what, what his goal is, is he wants me to purchase a larger booth and also DJ the show and pay to do it. Right. And that's what his goal of the, of the talk is well he'll talk to me for 15 minutes about my kid and this and that and then he'll like ease into it he'll be like so you gonna you guys are pretty tight in your booth aren't you you know and he'll like ease that way Mm -hmm. and then once the booth thing comes up he's like you know and then we're looking for a dj to do the whole thing and i'm like oh that'd be cool and he's like it's only 1500 bucks and it's like "Ah, you waited you know you did that there was like an order of operations here you motherfucker so and he's smart and i He's he's a salesman though. He'd be a great salesperson to hire for your company. No shit. I you know there's a, been a couple people in my life that I've crossed paths with that I've thought that like damn I wish I wish it was in the budget because I know you're too smart and you would negotiate basically like mm-hmm. I mean I would say you you'd negotiate your worth but it's something I can't afford it doesn't make sense yeah you know? that's uh, as my current battle of trying to figure out how we're gonna be able to get an operations person that doesn't cost over $80,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's like in, in the niche of the event industry and operations person salary is like literally 80 K right now. Yeah. So that's a lot. That's trying true. to poach someone or get someone, um, from another 
that wants a better situation and you're not offering that money is kind of hard. Yeah. Now I can get there, but like they need to be working events too. Mm-hmm. So like if I can get them on like a 20 on like a $40,000 salary for half the week and then be doing events on commission, then we can make it work. But Hashtag ask, do you charge for site visits? How about we just don't do them? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't do site visits. And I'll, if, if you're asking me to do a site visit, I'm going to quickly try and lie to you and be like, oh, I've, I've, and s- maybe not verbatim lie, but like try and make you think by how I word it that I've already done it. You know, just anything uh, other than yes. I will do site visits if I need to do a site visit for my usage. Basically, I'm saying if it's a some sort of custom lighting design, bistro lighting, or, you know, I need to see where the hell we're going to mount this stuff and hang this stuff. Basically, if the contract is over five grand, I might want a site visit mm-hmm. um, to, to see how we're going to set things up when we're getting into that level of logistic complications. mm um, like we just went today, not, not, it wasn't even a site visit, but it just happened to be meeting on site for a corporate audio event that's happening next week. Um, but we're just now getting into corporate audio and I want to cross our T's and dot our I's to make sure we pull it off correctly. Um, when you're talking like dealing with the American Red Cross for a huge fundraiser event. So Tyler also asked a question a little while ago. Yeah, that's in your and, territory. And so if you're listening, Tyler, he's trying to, f- I'm on DJ event planner. I was trying to figure out how to export, uh, all of the planning forms for like a certain time frame because you can export pretty much anything except that. Uh, and that's how I collect vendor information. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to export that. So I have a spreadsheet and can go through it, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, so how you do it, Tyler, you have to create a document like a contract document that has whatever merge tags on it that you're trying to pull out um, uh, from that planning form. And then you run a batch export on a date time frame, and that's it. Back on Nathan's question, because I just thought about this. I, I don't do site visits now, but like if I was brand new to a market, I would do site visits at all the venues that were worth a shit. If I had like, if I had never done Cadillac service garage before and I had an event coming out there, I would totally try and go do a site visit there just to schmooze and network and talk to the people that own the venue before doing said event. Yeah. I mean, I that's even, the, that's the only way I would be doing site visits. I even to basically like, network. Yeah, I I would even maybe like do it pre, wait for them to acknowledge that I'm the shit, and then do it again, you know, uh, or just wait until they've seen the work. Cause, yeah, no, because any any fucking Joe schmo entrepreneurially kid is gonna do what you just said. Well, and I would show up. I'm not know? gonna sell them. Like, right. Like, well, that's like, I'm just going to show up and just show that I care, you uh-huh. know, like, yeah, let me see the outlets. Oh, okay. Great venue. See you at the event. And then after the event, that's when I'm going to hit them with the, so that preferred vendor list, uh, you know, I killed that event. Um, I'm all on top of my shit. I was there before and everything. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. The, Greg, no. Greg Carlisle, who owns the millennium center, uh-huh. uh, left us a five star review on Google. And I was like, I like screenshotted it, sent it to Lindsay. And I was like, all right, we need to attack the millennium center. You know, like now's the time while we're on his radar. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause we're not in with them. They know who we are, but we're not in. God, They're I want, a hard one to get in with to uh, start with because it's like all bands for the most part over there. Yeah, that's true. Um, and they have a full time sound tech. You don't do shit when you go to that venue. They have a full bass boss sound system that could blow the, sp- I it's insane the bass boss system that's in there. In our bass hour, boss yeah. is crazy enough. Their bass boss system is huge though. Yeah, in an <laughs> a, in like an hour radius, they're definitely one of the top tier client venue. I don't places. I, I mean Cadillac. I don't think Cadillac is as nice as the Millennium Center. It's not, not hating on Cadillac. No, it's obviously not. it's probably second, but mm-hmm. but Millennium Center is probably the literal nicest. It's bigger too. The, the, oh, it's, it's way bigger. Shitload bigger. Yeah, it's super big. Uh, one of the first weddings I DJed there, uh, or I DJed at all, mm-hmm. was at the at the Millennium Center, and that was a rager. God, that was such a rager. 
It's like one of those venues you know of someone books there. You're like, oh, this is going to be a party. I just, it was also before I was like embedded in wedding DJing Mm -hmm. and I was still club guy. And so I was still like a really. That's probably why you got booked out there. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It was still like the mute, you know, I was quick mixing definitely. And it was up to date music, period, you know, Mm because I was used to that. And it wasn't hard at the time. Now, fuck that. There's no chance I could do a set like that. Cadillac is one of those places that. I love it, but the reason why they are, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say they're struggling, but you know, the, they have a lot of untapped potential for like weekdays and just more events in general is because of the level of restrictions they put on people mm-hmm. to go in there. Yeah. I don't know anything about running a venue. I'm sure that, you know, you can't use gaff tape there at all. You can't use gaff tape at Lavender Oaks mm-hmm. either. But. You can't use gaff tape at, uh, Cadillac Service Garage. You can't use it at Castle McCullough. Do you think it's because they paint their concrete? No, Cadillac actually has a legit reason. It's because literally the gaff tape will pull up the floor. That's what I'm saying. It's cr- it, painted concrete. It that's the same polished it whatever. Which is personally, in my opinion, that's just your fault as a venue for putting the wrong floor. It's in cheap it. as fuck. Yeah, you cheaped out on the floor. That's you, what's happening. Because I've seen polished concrete that doesn't have that problem. Like literally, if you use laminate. It's fine. Like laminate is the cheapest option. You could have done that, it, <laughs> you it, know. But like places like Cat, the Castle McCall, that's just them being an asshole. Okay, because I didn't know you couldn't use it there. No, you can't. You they 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 outlaw everything there. Huh. You can't use cold spars. You can't you do anything. I mean, I'm appreciative of how many weddings they do there, but other than that, I'm good. Load in is fucking impossible. You only have 30 minutes too. I don't know how y'all do it. N- n- well, we require the vin- the the our client has to book the whole day oh. because that's, that's the reason why it's hassle is because they split the day. You can book the, the morning or the evening half and uh-huh. the evening half starts at four or five o'clock or whatever. Yeah. Or I think it's four. It's like a like up morning till four and then four and on. So if they only, if they cheap out and only take that second half, then all the vendors literally have from four until the wedding starts to get everything in place. So we just, we just require, we bring that up to them in advance and tell them like, Hey, you know, all your vendors need you to book this whole slot Mm -hmm. (laughs) because we're all going to hate you if you don't. Yeah. We just get stuck. We just get stuck with 30 minutes setup time and we can deal with that. That's it's unfortunate, but like if you warn us, we can deal with it. Yeah. We can, we can pull it off. We just bring extra people. I mean, and then we charge them for the extra people. Yeah. I did that. But you're getting a charge either way. <laughs> no, I, I did that for a wedding because they wanted to push the end time envelope because they're also strict on being out of there by midnight. And I had a client that wanted to go until 1130. And I told him, I said, I, I got to, you're going to have to pay for an extra assistant to be there so that we can make sure we're broken down in 30 minutes. And uh, so they paid for it. But it was funny. We were actually broken down in 15 minutes waiting on the caterers to get out of our fucking way to get through the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun. A how many? Lot, a lot, Tyler. As he, he asked they do many, all. They do a shitload of. Yeah, this is like one of the busier venues in our area, and it's because it's a. Cheap. I mean, it is. A, it's a cheap venue. They're a budget venue, and it's it's called Castle McCulloch because it is a castle. But that word is loosely thrown. It's when a glorified I call it a moat. It's a glorified like old house with a moat, and it's large <laughs> enough to, I believe throw two or three weddings at the exact same time. <laughs> Tyler budget. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there's a lot of that shit where we live. Honestly, there's uh, a, there's a lot of that everywhere. It's just, there, I'm sure it's just, it's just the name of the game. They also do a crap load of like elopements and stuff there. Like that's what their morning weddings are. Non, nine times out of 10. It's like an elopement where they just are having a small gathering. Someone marries them and they have a caterer and a photographer and there's no entertainment at mm. all. Yeah, it's it is fairly common for a DJ or not a DJ, but for a couple here to hire a photographer and an efficient and then call it a day. And then they they go pick up catering from somewhere. Right. Oh, they'll cater it with Chipotle or something. Yeah. Or no, they'll buy they'll go cheaper than that. Yeah. <laughs> buy pizza. Or they'll just go whatever. to Costco and get the dollar hot dogs and bring. Yeah. But oh, I'm just saying, like Chipotle catering, they probably literally go to Chipotle and purchase. The, yeah, yeah. The sh- the stuff. Yeah. The uh, whole. It's case. not like Chipotle's there. Um, I actually did a wedding one time. And there were two food trucks, and one was Chipotle, and I was like, "Girl, oh my god!" A Chipotle has food trucks. Uh huh. 
When when did that start? Yeah, I, I didn't think, know it was a thing. I think one was Bandito and the other was Chipotle. It was like a burrito. You could choose whatever burrito you I wanted. I didn't know Chipotle it had a catering truck. Yeah. I know that I know that you can order maybe, catering. May, I could be tripping on that detail. I feel like it was a food I've truck, ne- though. I've it never was, seen a truck. Chipotle I've, was definitely catered Chipotle there. will come to your event, though, and they'll set up some tables and then have the whole spread. There's, I've done that before. There's but. a chance that Bandito was the only truck, and I'm just forgetting how it I was. know Bandito's there. Yeah. They do events and stuff. It was cool. Um Let's quick. What questions do the people have in the chat? We got 13 people in here. You guys got to have some burning questions, burning (laughs) desires. Uh, But yeah, the the planning forum thing, uh, if you just at the top when you're editing it and you can edit all the questions, you're in that view. uh, There's a button in the top right that says show. I think it says show merge tags Mm -hmm. and it'll show you the merge tag that correlates to the answer to that question all the way down that custom planning form you just made. Yeah. We don't normally answer gear questions, but just to save this dude, um, Joey, two, the two 15-inch Icoa tops are not good for anything over like 150 people. It doesn't matter how many subs you throw at them, whatever. They have a limiter in them, and literally when you push the volume on them, they literally just cut. D- dip down. They dip. God, I it, didn't. They duck themselves to protect themselves, and it's so annoying. I've got rid of them. Like the, We haven't sold them yet, but they're literally sitting just waiting for someone to fucking take them because... The they J- pissed me off too much. The JBLs, the battery ones. Yeah, the Eon, they, they do, do the same thing. They do the same thing. They have a ducking yep. limiter yep. in them. I had a DJ try to do intros off of one. Ooh, it was in, yeah, he, no. he was screwed. Yeah, it, yeah. There, I will defend him. He he. The was couple it, screwed him. Was it one of those situations where like they did the ceremony here, the dinner here, and the cocktail here, yeah. and then the reception and we, here? And yes, and we we check into that. It's like, oh, well, we... They sprung so it on him? It was last second. They were like, oh, we're going to do intros way over there. And, like, there's no even speaker there. So he had no choice. Anyways, it ducked. It was quiet. It was awful. Um, so Kevin's referring to uh, they get a contract in hand. How long do they have before the contract expires? I give them 10 days. Seven days. Uh, and we start hounding them the next morning. That we just technically it's valid for seven days. I think my follow up after a proposal has been sent is the day after, three days, five days, seven days. You do proposals in ten. Is it a signable proposal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a yeah. contract. It's a contract. It's just the terminology in Honeybook. Yeah. Honeybook calls it a proposal. That's weird. They shouldn't. That is not Invoice and contract together. Right. It's a proposal for them. Got you. Um, yeah, I do seven days, and I've even cut, thought about cutting it back to three days, but um, we're at seven. Why would people will just pay the day they sign? Everyone does that with me. <laughs> I mean, no, everybody pays the same day. You, as me too. You're not wrong, Tyler, and that's why I've thought about cutting it down to three days just to give you at least a little bit of time. Oh, is he saying they pay within three days? No, that he's saying they pay right then every time. Oh, they don't. Like, why wouldn't people just pay the day that they sign? Oh, well, they do. do pay they the do. Day the sign. But I'm saying they might not sign it. They, they have seven days to sign it. After they sign it, we give them like two weeks to get us that retainer fee. And if you need yeah. more time, then just talk to yeah, us. Yeah, I'm always pushing for them to just sign the damn contract because the, the payment sometimes it's like trying to get the parent's credit card and shit to put the money on. Um where like they don't have access to the credit card right. immediately. They, they don't have access to funds yet. Yeah, like parents paying. I don't. Yeah, just sign the fucking thing. Which yet again doesn't mean shit until we get the money. But uh, yeah, that moves them into the next tier, so it's not hounding them at least. Uh, yeah, tubes look cooler. Tubes are cool, dude. It's just unique. It's not similar to anything else, you know. It just um, screams party. Yeah. I mean, the tubes with not a gig bar, but maybe a gig bar, but like the wash bars, mm-hmm. whatever those are called, the, mm-hmm. like a four bar, it's like the perfect setup. That's like the perfect amount of lights to really. What's that thing J Book uses? And it? it's like a hex thing. Uh, it sh- it's a wash, but it washes like everywhere. Wash effects. Those. Wash effects is, yeah, if we you, use them too. If you had like one or two of those with the tubes, is mm-hmm. all you could ever need. That's like extravagant, even. Yeah. yeah. The, but the tubes are like, they're their own unique thing that's never been. It's, it's new. It's new, and no one's ever had it. Well, it's never been affordable until they just now started making them. I, I would have never risked buying a stair tubes and trying no that the, the cost factor is just too much how much are they 
the Asteras. Uh-huh. Um, I believe it's six thousand for six of them. It's like five, five or six thousand dollars for six of them. It's like a thousand dollars a tube. Why does Joe Bun use those? Is it because he already owns them? Well, he he invested and bought them, and for me, I think it's he's he likes it to be easy to use. Aren't the other ones easy? So the both lighting tubes are a little bit more of a hassle. Okay. Um, he they're smaller. The t- the stairs are smaller, so they're easier for him to just throw up wherever he wants. And I mean, other than that, the charging case is easier. Like it all fits in a nice little case, and it all charges in I, the case. I hate charging the the tubes, the tubes are an sure. annoying thing to charge because you have to pull them out. Period. So yeah. I guess for for Joe, he's been using them for so long, and he likes how compact, small they are. It's kind of like switching from the big uplights I have to the small uplights. Mm-hmm. It's, he just likes the smaller form factor, easier to use. I'm going to get custom bags for the tubes eventually. Uh, just like uh, Tukey covers or whatever, you know, that custom. You can just give, what do you, give what do you, them dimensions. Well, what, so, you can, so that you can keep the feet on them? Yes. No, oh. I wasn't thinking that, but now that you say that. Because yeah. that's, the, that's, the, that's the only complaint I always hear is that I can't keep the feet on them. I don't understand why. I mean, that's such a flaw in itself. You know what I mean? But like, like I never so... use them with the feet. I always use them with the stands. Yeah. I, I, I always bring four and put them on the stands mm-hmm. because well, I feel like when they're on the feet, as soon as you get a packed dance floor, the, they're only useful for the first people. Mm-hmm. They look good during cocktail and dinner. Yeah. But... but that, so that wasn't even what I was going to say. I just like, what if do you, you had them in like a Velcro sack though, no zipper mm-hmm. and, and it opened, uh, like a, like a cigarette pack, like okay. from the top. You know, and okay. then, and then you could plug all. Your- oh, so kind of like my Maui Five Go bag, where it just uh, the top opens up and you pull the tubes out. Yeah, and that way you could set it sideways, open the top, and just pull them out a couple inches, mm. and then plug all your shit in. Real, and then you don't have to fucking unbox them. That would be worth the cost of the bag. Why haven't you brought this up to us? We can see if they can make bags that way. Yeah, I mean they should. It will also, it would be Velcro and not a zipper, so you know it would have more life in it. That would make so much easier for charging and everything. The problem with that, Eric, is the weight will be on the Velcro side and won't be it's not a big deal. balanced. Something to keep in mind. Yeah, you're not wrong because you can't, you couldn't put the heavy side two and two, you know, to even it out. You couldn't do that. You could if you made a split open bag. Yeah, but fuck that. You don't but have th- to. But that just makes charging inconvenient you too. You could just literally you... put some beast ass Velcro on it. It's not it's, that serious. Well, the Velcro, it's, the Velcro is not going to open. I have the. Velcro is super strong. It, people underestimate it. Like just what you said, it's it's going to last way more than a zipper. But even the the weight isn't too far off. If it's if you're carrying them, it like it'll angle like this. Mm-hmm. But like it's not a huge. How about we just move the handle so that it's further back so that it compromises on the weight. Mm-hmm. And we're also going to get bags that fit six or eight. I haven't decided yet, but whatever we decide is our package. We're going to get a bag that fits that instead of four because we're never only giving four. It's either six or eight, you know. That's funny. I only sell four. Really? Six and eight's just overkill for me. That's fine. Yeah. We just, I mean, what do you charge if, let's say you just 500? 500? Or 450, 450 for four on yeah. stands. Yeah. We charge 600, but, uh, but we give an eight, you know. Maybe I yeah. should maybe I should just match your price on that and cut it down to four. I don't I don't see the use in like like four looks really good. It's like six and eight can be to some people just too much. But also when you when you do six and eight, you got to put like two on the floor, and then those become completely useless when your dance floor opens. Because like we used eight for my wedding, right? But like the front two that were on the stands, like they were completely pointless uh-huh. unless you were up front, right? Six, I think six is a better Six number. on stands would look good. It's just the whole like carrying thing. So like I'm not going to bring six. I had to bring eight or four you because my, of the current situation. You get my point though with yeah. the bag though. If you could Which, make them fit six. To your point though, the Asteras come in packs of six. Mm-hmm. And so do the Chave well sticks but and stuff. the tubes are twice the size and the brightness, you know. Uh, and they're 360. That's And it's all the way around. And that's probably why they're so much brighter. And the surface area in general, but uh, Lindsay, she knows what I'm emergency, doing. emergency, Eric, emergency. 
This would be a great lesson, Eric. Pick it up on phone so people know how to talk to their to their coworkers. Um, nah. I'm not, I'm not a good role model for that. I got the both lighting hybrid wash movers. Oh, did you get the new ones, Nathan? The like the the new ones that are hybrid spot wash and everything. Hoping they can replace my wash effects. Or are you just talking the wash movers? Because there's 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 a there's a hybrid that does spot beam and wash, and then there's just the wash movers that do beam and wash. But yeah, a shoulder strap. Hell yeah, that would also be a good one. Don't they already come with one? No. No, I'm thinking about their they're, bags. They're big straps, but the bags are they're fine. I hate shoulder straps personally. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Have you seen where the one guy put it on his back as a backpack? You put through the 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 two bag, put it on like a backpack. Uh-huh. You can literally put it on like a backpack. Really? Yeah. You huh. just have someone hold it, and you can put it on like a backpack and walk into your events. Okay. Someone posted it for us. Um, I'm making a note though too. Yeah, I need to do that. I, see if they can make a, a bag like that because that would be a way better bag. I uh, I'm gonna hit up two key covers anyways, just because their shit's like top. Top, top, it's just top. really expensive. It is. I just ordered 12 custom facade bags for our tiny little facades. Yeah, because the and bags keep falling the apart. The bag was three times the price of the facade. But we've been using the same brand. I'll, as soon as you break it, I'll just buy you a brand new facade. I don't care. And, yeah, but the but bag's going to last forever. The, that bag's about to last forever, though. And yeah, it was crazy. It was $3,000 or something worth, worth of bags. It was insane. Just for soft bags with Velcro. Uh, Joey, in short, yes, I do have a background in lighting. I, I'm engineer by trade. I love the whole lighting design aspect, and I used to work for a company that did a lot of it, so I already had it in my repertoire to design and sell. Handle move is the move. Handle move is the move. <laughs> no, the three-in-one. Haven't set it up yet. They're fucking Nathan. If you got those ones, they're massive. They like they're like this big. They're 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 a big ass mover. All right, that's enough fucking gear shit. What do you guys think? All right, so, uh, so this past Sunday, uh, one of my DJs they they were getting in their car on the way. They had already checked in on our morning check in. We have mm-hmm. that too. Uh, but they had checked in and they were walking to their car and they had discovered that two of their tires were like beyond slashed, you know, some dickhead. Oh, we're, okay, cool. We're talking about this week. Right. Um, and, you know, she had to like deal with the police and all that. Basically, we can argue all day whether she could have made it or not. In her, she could not go though, all of a sudden. And that was the position we were in all of a sudden is fill the gig. Um, now, we didn't have. I think we only had one other DJ out working in the area, you know, so we should have had 10 guys available, available, right? Well, mm, the morning of you get a phone call like that. You're probably not available all of a sudden, you know, it's real easy to not answer your phone. If someone, if you know why they're, co- so that happened, of course. Uh, and so Wasn't I it a dream week too. what dream fest or whatever. Yeah. But that's in Raleigh. Yeah, so uh, people, a lot of people go to it. Yeah. Uh, I I sped to the wedding mm-hmm. to handle the ceremony until the guy that did agree to take over got there and what whatnot. Um, but, Maybe you have like an emergency bonus. Well, I just don't like we even have systems in place and we were there on time and covered. So I, I haven't but, gone to the level of what I can't remember who we had on the podcast, but they talked extensively about the emergency DJ. Uh huh. Um, I can't remember who that was. Was it but Mary? It might have been. It was someone with a lot of DJs, but basically there's someone that's paid on reserve to sit there, and if they don't do the event, they get paid like a uh, hundred bucks for the weekend just for right. not getting drunk. Right. Uh, it's it was like up until a certain time. They had to be on call. Uh huh. See, that's what Lindsay's going to be eventually. Yeah, like yeah. Because Lindsay, Lindsay was the first person. She's the the hub of all information. I wish I could remember who it was that said they had this in place. But basically, they they were on hold, and it, if they did the event, they got paid extra uh-huh. for an emergency fill in. But or they just got paid a hundred dollars to go have a nice dinner for that night and not and be available. Right. So yeah, I mean, it would, that's the, I haven't got to that level of would, like. 
on call yet, but I do try to hold back one DJ. It would be perfect for Lindsay once she knows. She doesn't know how to DJ wedding yet, so obviously that's not feasible. But once she's learned, she's she's the office person for the mm-hmm. day. So if if something you know something goes wrong, all she's got to do is if she has calls, cancel them and go. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and she's working anyways that day, so you know. Like I would just pay her for the gig on top of what she was making anyways, mm-hmm. you know, so that would, a win-win kind of. And then that way I would only have to be present if somewhat something even further happened, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's an upcoming solution, but I'm curious what everyone else does. You know, I know that you probably, you can't just fucking type that shit in the chat probably, but, uh, that's an interesting topic is once you have two or more people on the same day, what happens when, you know, what happens if somebody gets hit by an 18 wheeler on their way? You know, I mean, heaven forbid, of course. Okay. I'm just saying a blunt way of there's no chance that they can make it. Just that's why I, I like to end that. Cause someone's going to be like, Oh, what if they just did, this? you know, <laughs> you know, we like to think about what that situation would look like and preventative ways. But in general, if you know the worst thing did happen and your DJ got in this massive car wreck, died on the way there. I mean, either you're going to find someone to go make something happen for that couple, or you, that's probably what you're, you're going to find whoever the fuck you can. Uh-huh. It doesn't even have to be a DJ, someone to go out there with a speaker, I've play some it. music and make it happen. I've done it. Right. Um, uh, and you know, like if, if, if I'm thinking in that scenario and I didn't have someone, on reserves like the assistant could grab a speaker and play some music Uh and make a simple announcement or maybe one of the guests has got experience that could make the announcement but you know in that scenario though the couple is very probably very reasonably right and if, um, if, they're, they're, if they're not, you're getting your money back anyways. The fucking yeah, dude the, died. The, that was that was already in the that's, play. That's you're already getting your money. Just, you're getting just, your money back, and we're trying to make the best of it because right. it's a once in a lifetime. A, thing. Lo- a lot of the times when I'm having this, because this is a topic, you know, and uh, the, they think I'm implying like in order to keep the money, and it's like oh da da da. No, you don't deserve money if you fuck it up that badly. Like, mm-hmm. and you do deserve to to throw them a freebie and help them out and still get music on that you do deserve. So, and I, of, who cares about two grand or whatever the cost, you know, mm-hmm. you lose that. I don't care about that. I just, I don't know. It still just makes you nervous. And when it happens, I don't know if it's ever even happened to you. Uh, it's, it's like swallowing a baseball all of a sudden, like literally like you're just like, like, Oh my God. It's just survival mode to the maximum. No, I haven't had it. Yet. I was sprinting. I like got up and I sprinted downstairs to get shit going. Mm-hmm. You know, I was I was literally, and it was stu- like you said. Like if we had just talked a little bit and I had calmed down, I probably would have had a better solution. But in the moment, it's tough. Mm-hmm. That's why order of operations, follow the procedure. Like, and also take some training on how to make decisions in crunch time. That that maybe too. It just does. Well, luckily, it doesn't happen so often that I'm used to it. And if it did, I'd probably be better at it. But also, we probably wouldn't have a company. (laughs) I feel like I, and it's not even DJ related, but just being in high pressure, need to make decisions quickly situations and make the right decision. Like, I I lived and breathed out of Goodyear every single day when I was an engineer there. Uh There was shit breaking, this breaking, whatever, left and right. How can we work around it? So. Being the boss's boss's boss is basically asking me, how can we make this work in the next 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, give me two seconds. Let me look at the data. Right. Because that's that's always the biggest thing when making crunch time decisions. Take five seconds. Yeah. Well, take five seconds and evaluate the situation. Tyler said, have assistants who are being taught to start DJing for your company. Well, the problem is. So I even, it's hard. like I said, I even, I had roughly 10 DJs that live in this city, not working. And I know they have gear, you know, it's not like there's an, anything like that, you but would, they just don't want to just be sp- sprung a wedding on them. They just don't have, they don't have to do it. You, you should, know? you should do with that, whatever. I can't remember who the hell did it, but you should do that. Like pay someone a hundred bucks to just be on call. Mm-hmm. You're, you're but the weekend. I take uncle. someone out of the rotation. <laughs> 
you know. Well, you don't have to. You could just have it in addition when there isn't a fully booked weekend. Yeah. I mean, it could even just be like in October and in Cuz then you could just assume then you could just make yourself assume the on call or Lindsay of course, but uh you know, if it was like an October Saturday and all 16 or whatever the hell are booked, then you just know, all right, I I'm not doing shit. I'm sitting here until five o'clock to make sure everybody made it there. I guess if, if the agreement was a hundred dollars, right? Let's <laughs> yeah. just go with it's a hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. I would pay five fifty two hundred dollars a year for that position to be filled for yeah. sure. But filling that position that that's a very unique person because that person first off they can't go DJ on Saturdays ever. What? person that well knows no it would to, it would rotate it would just be whoever whoever wants to be you like have a sign up sheet for it pretty uh-huh. much it's um like and it could be one of those things where it's like like hey, for this weekend you're you're texting the group hey who wants to fill the hundred dollar position this week probably more that you would want to have like like a month out but mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be fought out any more than that yeah because you could just put a sign up sheet and maybe Maybe one of the motherfucking DJs wants to sign up for it, and like if, and then basically if they get booked, they just get taken off of it. Yeah, and then someone else has to fill it. That's a lot more work, but that's it not is a bad a, idea. Welcome to my management. This is what this is. That right there is like me, us trying to always fill our assistant role. Mm-hmm. It is fucking annoying. <laughs> I'm glad. I mean, I just don't have to deal with that. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've literally not had an assistant until the day before. Yeah. And finally found one. I helped you that one time. (laughs) That was fun. I had fun. Well, uh, that one was such a travel. It was hard to get someone random to come with me. Uh It'd have to be someone. I didn't want to be in the car for three hours with someone I didn't fucking know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know, worst com- it was either going to be you or Christine. It was one or the other. See, Brian says that, but you live in Atlanta. You know, these, these gigs that people are, that that's even possible, would be a four-hour, five-hour drive for you. Um, no, we're, well, we're, we're, seriously. like, Yeah, Brian, give me a good deal on a Tesla, by the way. I'm about to buy one. I know, you, I know you're working for that motherfucker. That's one of the most interesting things, though, because... So say that event though was out at the beach that just happened this weekend, then I, you're just fucked. I have two dudes at the beach though. Oh well, that's we we only. It's go down to, in Charleston, okay? I've it's got like, two dudes there. It's I, in Florida. I don't have dudes there, but you know I have two dudes in Asheville. I have two dudes in Wilmington. I have well one's in Fayetteville and one's in Jacksonville but those are Wilmington and then I have two in Columbia which could cover Charleston but that's like 2 hours yeah but you I have spread out guys but okay I, it's, it's at still the, no it's guarantee. at the beach and the beach guys are already booked then you're, then just, you're just fucked you're just fucked unless they know somebody i, I mean i know who i'm calling you know yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. calling the network yeah but but my dudes are all not showing. And I feel like that's what everyone's last resort is, though. You know, like we can, when you're in a pinch like that, it's literally calling desperation anybody to fill it. <laughs> uh, One well, guy on the chart, dude. Too. Slip Elon a note. I want a Model Y or a Model X, and I want a good ass deal. There's only one guy on the org chart between him and Elon. That's sarcasm. I was about to say there ain't no way that in the hell you ain't. If that's not sarcasm, I I won't say it. Actually, I'll high five you. How about that? I won't get that. Does Elon even (laughs) hold a position on the the board anymore, or is he just an advisor? Because I feel like he stepped down and he's not even on the board anymore. That was with X. That was with Twitter. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Twitter. He he wasn't doing the great job there. He's still full on for Tesla. Yeah, he really did kind of bomb that one. It's me, my boss, then Elon. Psh, that means you work directly for one of the C C chairman people. Wow, Is, you don't you don't put Jesus. That in means there? you. That means you were like a vice president or a president, my boy. Because that's what was underneath. You got like the CEO, then you have which is Elon, and then you have the board underneath of him, and then you have the vice president or presidents of all those different divisions that are up to them, and then you got all the motherfuckers underneath that. Unless Elon just did it differently, which would make a lot of sense if he did a whole different structure than typical corporate America. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know either. I do need a new car, though. I've been studying um, over the last couple months uh, how Jeff Bezos is like Amazon businesses, like their structure for meetings and stuff. And it's very, very, very different from what I've known in corporate America. I've heard a bunch about that too, actually. Everyone has to write if they're, if you're going to have a meeting. So say I'm going to have a meeting with you and a bunch of other people next week. I have to write a one page memo or multiple pages of the meeting. Everything relates to the meeting. And the first thing we do when we come into that meeting is I pass it out and everybody spends 30 minutes reading it. Everybody has to spend 30 minutes reading the full agenda, the full topic, everything. And then there's 30 minutes of discussion after that or 10 and 10, you know, uh-huh. but the point is that if you emailed someone saying, Hey, we're going to talk about this quality issue, whatever next week, no one's going to look into it. Mm-hmm. So the point is that everyone has to read it in that dedicated fresh, time frame fresh on your mind. so that everybody's on the same page finally. And we're not spending 10 minutes arguing over what the fuck that actually is going on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and then he also makes, and I've actually made this suggestion to some other people, and they've all implemented it too. Every meeting, the least senior person speaks first and then works its way up. Because if like I walked into any of my meetings with my people and I'm the first one to say, that might change what they're about right, to say. Right, down the way. Yeah. So you start at the least important? Yeah, what? or the least senior. Right. Least seniority person. Senior. So so that way it... it, it because you could actually, if you did it the opposite way, those younger employees that are fresh to the company might actually just literally emulate and talk exactly like you for everything mm-hmm. because that's what they think you expect mm-hmm. instead of breeding fresh ideas. That's a good idea. Uh, what will, up, Pilo? Will we take outdoor gigs now that it's getting warmer? Uh, yes. No. What? Good. Keep it. Keep that away. I'll well, take- uh, I... I, I I will not. Yeah. I I have it very strict in the sales process that if a lead were to come about and the venue is an outdoor venue, I am automatically not available. <laughs> so, yeah. um, unless they're like desperately wanting me Thousands. in a big package way. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, we, we, we do outdoor event. Like what he said, if the budget is up there and basically if they're willing to book us, their budget is worth us dealing with it. It's not that hot. Must be like on that fat burning. I'm hungry. Just get yeah. it, get I got my metabolism gym. is rolling. You, what, are you, what are you doing? You fasting again? No. No. I eat, I eat pretty heavily, actually. Oh. Yeah, cool. I can't do the fast shit. I, I was just literally looking at my thing. I've been fasting for 22 hours Fuck. since my last meal. Fuck that. I ate. I ate filet, mignon, and shrimp Alfredo pasta like three hours ago. And that I, sounds amazing. I, I'm going to eat it again. That sounds amazing. Anyways, we are at the 7 o'clock mark, which means we're done cool. for this uh, Q&A session. Ooh. So uh, Next is Mobile B, or whatever it's called, Midwest. No, we got a week or two in between there. I'm gone. Or are you off the next two? Uh, no. No. We, next week we're on. If we choose to be. I was about to say, we got two weeks until we're I, in Mobile Beach. I am gone on or, the 23rd, but the 16th we might do. Midwest. It. Did you say Mobile Beach? Yeah, but I meant Midwest. Midwest, yeah. Mobile Beach's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even exist anymore. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so Midwest coming up uh, end of April. We'll be live probably the 29th and the 30th doing something. I don't know yet, but we got it all. We got the gear together. I got meetings coming up to discuss logistics on some of that shit. But anyways, thank you guys so much for all you guys that tuned in live. You guys listening, uh, you should join us on, at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays live so that you guys can ask us questions, participate, and answer all your burning desires yeah. that you have. Um, stay um, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you know when those are coming out or follow us on Instagram. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening, tuning in, watching, and we will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. As soon as I can find the button.